I'm Justin Roberts of Biz News, and with me to discuss the State Capture Commission Part 1 is Director of Accountability now, Paul Hoffman. Paul, it's been a cumbersome process to get to this point. The report will be handed over in three parts. The second and third are expected to be handed over at the end of January and February, respectively. Part one of the report is lengthy, almost 900 pages. What are your high-level remarks of part one? Yes, you're quite right, Justin, and thank you for the opportunity. The, uh, the commission sat for about four years, and it, uh, it heard over 300 witnesses, and uh, it spent a billion rand of taxpayers' money to get to this point. And as you suggest, this is only the first tranche of three, and uh, it, it, it concentrates on um, SAA and its associated state-owned enterprises on the sad story of the capture of SARS in uh, the Tom Moyani Bain consulting combination. And then finally, it deals with the role of the Guptas in uh, the uh, New Age uh, newspaper group getting the benefits of the taxpayers' money by simply hijacking government ad spend and charging extortionate rates to uh, sit at breakfasts that it arranged in order to swell its coffers. So I think that we, we, we should not get too excited about the, uh, the report at this stage. I imagine that the Deputy Chief Justice, or the Acting Chief Justice as he now is, um, will uh, consolidate all of his recommendations in the final tranche, which we can look forward to receiving at the end of February. Uh, at this stage, let us remind ourselves that a commission of inquiry is simply a tool of the executive branch of government that is used to investigate a complex factual matrix with a view to ascertaining what is the wheat, what is the chaff, what is the truth, what is false, and to make recommendations in relation to those findings of fact that are made. And when the uh, Zondo Commission reports as it does, the findings of fact bind nobody. In, in, in truth, those who are fingered in the report are free to review the findings of the report on the basis that the uh, Chief Justice has erred in the assessment of the facts that he's made. And his recommendations as to the remedial action that is required to um, address the phenomenon of state capture and to prevent a repetition are recommendations of the take-it-or-leave-it kind. So they do not bind the government. The, um, the ANC, and in particular the president, have made encouraging noises about the acceptability of the, uh, of, of the report at this stage, having only uh, received the first of three installments. But um, our president has been very cautious to say that the official response to Parliament will only follow at the end of June this year after he has had, him and his cabinet and his advisers, have had four months to actually digest what is coming out of the uh, Zondo Commission. We can see trends emerging already. Certainly, um, uh, Judge Zondo has not been shy to recommend criminal prosecutions of people like uh, Tom Moyani for perjuring himself in Parliament, Duda Moyani for fraud and corruption, uh, the Guptas, and many, many more. Those are the, that's really the highlights package of uh, the, the people that have been identified as uh, worthy of criminal investigation. The difficulty with that recommendation is that our criminal justice administration is in such disarray at the moment that um, it, it is actually not fit to carry out the work 
that the Zondo Commission is bringing it. And our National Director of Public Prosecutions has warned last year already that the avalanche of work that the uh, Zondo Commission will create for the prosecution service and for uh, criminal investigators is of such a scale that they will not be able to do it all and they will have to be selective. Now, many have suggested that if you're going to be selective with Dudu Mayani, then it would be wise to simply charge her for uh, revealing the identity of Mr. X during her, um, her evidence before the Zondo Commission. That is a simple prosecution, and it sends a signal in a short space of time that the National Prosecuting Authority is in fact serious about getting on with the business of uh, exacting accountability for what went on in the, um, in, in the state capture process, which began before the Zuma era and continues in the form of COVID preneurism and other clever tricks um, after the Zuma era. As far as Zuma himself is concerned, we at Accountability now laid charges against him in 2015 for decapitating the National Prosecuting Authority. You'll recall that he essentially bribed the then National Director of Public Prosecutions, Polisi Nkasana, to leave his post after only 22 months. Now, that has been the subject of civil proceedings. Everybody has gone on oath in relation to it. And the courts have found that that deal was illegal. Well, it's more than illegal. It's criminal. It's a breach of the uh, serious violation of the Prevention and Combating of Corrupt Activities Act. And a simple prosecution under that act could, if successful, lead to a 15-year term of imprisonment for those accused of wrongdoing in the dispensing of the services of the head of a supposedly independent prosecution service protected by the Constitution. And you could get that trial done within a week, and you could then, instead of putting so many resources into the Shabir Sheikh 700 plus transactions, you could get the same result. Shabir Sheikh, for corrupting Mr. Zuma, got a 15 year sentence and the prosecution will be hard-pressed to do better than that if it ever gets to succeed against Mr. Zuma in the massive Billy Downer prosecution that, that it has mounted. So I don't, uh, I don't think that the uh, National Prosecuting Authority is boxing smart, and I don't think that it has the skill, the will, the capacity, and the resources to do what needs to be done. The head of its investigating directorate has, has uh, resigned in a huff, or certainly in frustration, if not in a huff. And uh, the, the disarray uh, because of saboteurs within the ranks, uh, because of the hollowing out of the prosecution service during the Zuma years, leaves us in a situation in which it is going to be necessary to reform the Criminal Justice Administration so as to better equip it to deal with grand corruption. Paul, as you mentioned, part one was split into three subsections, namely South African Airways and its subsidiaries, the New Age newspaper and its controversial business breakfast, and SARS and public procurement in this country. Is there anything that we didn't already know that has been disclosed in part one that wasn't freely available before the release of the report? No, I think that the, uh, the investigative uh, journalists in South Africa, the whistleblowers, those who have poured over the, uh, the evidence, like Paul Holden from, uh, uh, from London, they have all got to take a bow. In fact, the, uh, the, uh, just, Justice Zondo is very complimentary toward whistleblowers like Ethel Williams and Cynthia Stimple. Uh, there is nothing new... The only thing that is new is that the version of the whistleblowers and the version of the investigative journalists at Amabungani, Scorpio, News24, Biz News, Paul O'Sullivan even, 
their version is accepted by uh, the uh, the acting chief justice, which is a feather in the cap of their work, and it certainly puts the uh, onus on those fingered to now either uh, man up to what they have done or, which is more likely, to take the findings against them on review and to challenge the um, analysis of the facts that has been made by the Zondo Commission. And Chief, uh, the Acting Chief Justice has actually anticipated that uh, there will be uh, review proceedings by various people who resist being um, held to account, who resist repaying the loot, and who resist being responsive to the work that the Commission has done. Where to from here? As I mentioned earlier, we know that part two and three are expected to be released at the end of January and February, respectively. But what actions are likely to be taken by the president? Or put differently, are those implicated likely to see justice? Yes, I think as far as uh, the governmental response is concerned, it is very clear that the reform of the criminal justice administration is necessary. You will remember, because you're a good journalist, that in August 2020, the National Executive Committee of the ANC said that it is time to create a permanent, standalone, independent uh, entity to deal with corruption. And that really uh, matches what the courts have said in the Glenister litigation, which was, was waged uh, years ago. The, the inwardness of reform of the Criminal Justice Administration is that the government has to come up with a, a plan that is constitutionally compliant and which matches the, uh, the resolution that uh, the NEC of the ANC passed calling upon uh, um, the, uh, for, for, for cabinet urgently to establish such a body, a new anti-corruption body where uh, the, the functions relating to dealing with serious corruption are uh, in, in a one-stop shop, a permanent entity, which is what the Scorpions and the Hawks are not. Even the ID is not a permanent entity. And what accountability now has done in this regard is in August last year, that is a year after the NEC, we produced a draft constitutional amendment and draft enabling legislation for what we call the Chapter 9 Integrity Commission. We say that permanence is best achieved by housing your anti-corruption machinery of state within Chapter 9 because you can't close down a Chapter 9 institution without a special majority in Parliament. If the Scorpions had been a Chapter 9 institution, they would still be with us today but they are not because they weren't. We've also uh, suggested that the National Prosecuting Authority should be freed of the shackles of the Ministry of Justice and made more independent, reporting only to Parliament and not to the Ministry of Justice. The uh, Director General of Justice is the accounting officer of our supposedly independent prosecution service. That's simply not good enough, and we have suggested amendments in that regard. But the uh, what we call the Integrity Commission is called by the, uh, the Zondo Commission a um, commission against corruption, a CASA, anti-corruption agency uh, of South Africa, and it bears similarities to what, to what we have suggested, it seems to be focused only on the uh, procurement by the state. But um, we, we think that a, uh, a, a elimination of serious corruption from the work of the National Prosecuting Authority and the transfer of that responsibility to what we call the Integrity Commission is in fact the best practice way to implement the... Um, findings of the Constitutional Court, which are binding, uh, unlike the Zondo Commission 
findings. The findings of the Constitutional Court are binding on the state. They don't seem to have been properly understood and the, um, the reform process in the very near future will have to include a proper analysis of what the law actually is. Because those, Zondo um, was not in the, uh, the Glenister II case. He, he was not uh, sitting in, in, in that um, hearing. But in that case, and still binding in law, are the criteria for the anti-corruption machinery of state, which we have called the STIRS criteria, uh, specialized, trained, independent, resourced, and secure in tenure of office, or what the NEC calls permanent. And getting those into the law uh, has not happened with the Hawks NPA combination that has been in place uh, during the, uh, the Zuma years. And the, uh, the reform needs to be aimed at achieving best practice compliance with what the law requires in relation to anti-corruption machinery. Uh, Zondo's recommendation um, goes part of the way, but not all of the way. And a, a national debate is required. Everybody should be thinking about it. And uh, the uh, parliament and the cabinet, the Ministry of Justice, the Ministry of Police, need to be looking at the draft which was made available to them in August last year by Accountability Now. Anybody can see it on our website, and anybody is welcome to criticize it, to suggest how it can be improved, and everybody should be uh, assisting in uh, generating the political will that is required to put proper anti-corruption machinery of state in place. This isn't really a legal question at all. It's a question of the political will to stop tolerating corruption, to stop the culture of impunity that is abroad in the land, and to put an end to looting without having to pay back. And all of those can be achieved if the necessary will is generated by the people of South Africa and by the politicians who supposedly represent them. Uh, in, in uh, processing the recommendations of the Zondo inquiry insofar as they relate to anti-corruption machinery, in processing the, well, the cabinet is required to process the resolution of the NEC. It is the highest uh, decision-making body in the, uh, the ANC between uh, conferences. And of course, Parliament has been given the benefit not only of the, um, of the accountability now draft, but also of an initiative which was started in July last year by the Democratic Alliance, which uh, is not as brave as accountability now because it has decided only to seek to reform the investigative machinery for anti-corruption work it has not yet gone as far as accepting that the National Prosecuting Authority is not up to the task and that the prosecutorial functions should also be transferred to the new body. That is what we are uh, contending for in, in the drafts that have been suggested by accountability now. And um, it is certainly, uh, our version is certainly closer to what... Uh, uh, Justice Zondo is suggesting in his report. So there's a lot of work to be done yet. And, and as I say, the, the Zondo recommendations bind nobody. And the, the, the task is really, if, if, if Parliament is going to fulfill its oversight and accountability functions, if it is going to be open, accountable and responsive as the Constitution requires it to be, then there ought to be an urgent debate about the nature and extent of the reform of the Criminal Justice Administration so as to bring to account 
those who have been involved in uh, state capture and so as to prevent state capture again by the deterrent effect of showing that uh, corruption with impunity is history in South Africa and that if you, if you are corrupt, you will be caught, you will be tried and you will be punished. Your loot will be raked back from you. That's really the, the best thing that we can get uh, arising out of our taxpayer one billion rand investment in the, in the Zondo Commission.